Okay, so I think now's probably a good time to um, kick things off and start today's webinar. Uh, my name's Ben Arendt, and I'm a developer relations manager here at Teleport. And today I'm going to give you an overview of Teleport, Teleport 12. I'm going to go over a lot of the features, but mainly it's going to focus on device trust and Windows access, which are two new additions to Teleport. But I'm going to start with a small story, you know, to um, start or end your day. Um, you know, this will probably be a very common site for many people, uh, either through COVID or working from home. You know, you're working on your desk, you're looking out your window, all of your colleagues around the world, obviously like Teleport. And this is sort of uh, the standard practice for people working remotely. Modern workforces work from home, they work anywhere, they might bring their own devices. You know, you're looking out the window, trying to figure out why your build is broken. And as you end the day, you know, you might relax, you pick up the latest Gone Girl movie, a good thriller. But you recently learned about your home lab and you've just installed Plex on your machine. And so you're using Plex to stream your media from one device to another. It's super smooth, it's super cool, super streamlined. It's a great home, um, home lab server addition to add. But as you're relaxing, something's happening in the background. And you may not know this, that something isn't quite right with your machine. And suddenly things are going a bit slower, a bit awry. And the next thing you know that your security team says uh, SIM alert is going off and something bad is happening with your infrastructure. And then the next thing you realize, oh, your whole database and keys are suddenly on the dark web and someone has access to your infrastructure. And you think, oh, I was just sitting at my home desk, looking out the view, trying to watch Gone Girl, trying to relax. And you might think, Ben, this seems like a crazy story. Why would you start with this? I start with this story because this is the um, pretty much the scenario that happened with LastPass uh, earlier this year. It turned out LastPass had a vulnerability in which a senior DevOps engineer had installed Plex, which had installed a had a remote code execution. The attackers had installed a keylogger. They got access to his master password vault. Then they managed to get access to their cloud environment, which was S3. And unfortunately, they also had encryption keys to LastPass backups. And so what we have seen is, you know, it, this isn't just LastPass. This is also other companies. Um, Circle CI also had an incident earlier this year in which an engineer was a target of an attack in which a MFA-backed hardware token was taken from them. And... Last year, unrelated, I interviewed their CTO, um, Rob, and we talked about securing CI/CD. And I will read this quote from the podcast verbatim. Um, you can scan this QR code and get access to this podcast. And so I'll just do that. And so understanding that no matter how strong our systems are and how well designed your software is, there are pathways for people to perform actions. And you have to think about the human element in your environment. And I think this is a great example and a great introduction into the anatomy of a common attack that we see. And so these are common approaches which are sequence leading to a breach. A human makes a mistake, you know, you may unwittingly or knowingly make this mistake. In this case for last class, it was installing an outdated version of Plex on the same machine that they used to access production environments. An attacker exploited this error and managed to steal a secret. They got a foothold in the infrastructure and then pivoted to adjacent systems to get access to the keys. And there's many responses. So there's training, process, visibility, for example. Phishing is a common way in which humans make mistakes. Just by clicking a link, bad things can happen in, um, for people. And then exploiting secrets. So people often have like secrets management or votes. And then they might get that secret and then they use that to establish a foothold and get into adjacent systems. And what we found at Teleport is, is that secrets don't scale. Um, the probability of a secret leaks only grows with scale and complexity. And for example, let's say I was to take a very simple example of you wanted to give someone access to a database table, uh, let's say a Postgres table. Not only um, do you give access to the database protocol to get access to that database, you might give them access to the machine itself, so you have to protect SSH. 
it may this database may be running in Kubernetes, so you might need to protect the Kubernetes API. You might be using a console, so for example, PG admin to administer your database. You also need to protect this, and then you also have the raw infrastructure itself. For example, AWS console. And then you also have to think about all the other things which also interact with that database table. For example, your CI CD service might read or update those tables. And so you can see very quickly just for one database table, there's so many secrets that you have to need and protect. So before I dive into Teleport itself, I'm just going to get a quick poll here um, to see, I'm going to launch it. OK, so I need to stop sharing. And I'm going to present this poll. And so this is just a poll to say, like, are you currently using Teleport? So I can get a gauge of where the audience is so I can tune the next part of um, the webinar for everyone. So you should see in the right-hand side under poll, um, you can enter this. So um, let me know if you can find the poll. OK, yep, the results coming in. I'll give it a minute or two. OK, great. Um, this is surprising, actually. It's um, great to see a lot of Community Edition Teleport, which is our open source version, a mixture between community and enterprise. And then some people currently evaluating, and then seven people who are new and just want to learn more about Teleport. So um, a nice blend. And it's great you know, the Teleport people who are already using Teleport are here today. So I'm going to go back to my slides. And so for people who are in the world, like who, people who are new to Teleport, this might be the case of your current environment. You know, you might have multiple services, multiple infrastructure. You probably have a mixture of tools which you've either inherited over time or have adopted. You might have a bastion, a jump box, some legacy uh, param infrastructure. And we see this is very common as sort of teams grow. You have a range of infrastructure and resources that you need to get access to. But it sort of creates this big web and this big mess. And once people have deployed Teleport, itself, which is an identity-aware access proxy, it centralizes everything. And there's many benefits to centralization. One is by having a central place for both your services and engineers, is that you can consolidate all of the rules and access controls for all of these things, and also identity, into the one central uh, access platform or Teleport. And then when you access all of the resources that you have, let's say your your servers, your Kubernetes clusters, your databases, web apps, you can always fine tune how you give access to those resources. And if you haven't centralized things, as you know, let's say if you have multiple cloud providers, there's just more possibilities that someone could get a foothold and access your infrastructure. And one thing that Teleport does is, you know, we remove secrets. And so as we go back to that example of LastPass, human error obviously revolves around secrets. So it's passwords, private key, session tokens. And one thing that's core to Teleport is the security model does not use secrets. The agent is stateless. You can use biometric authentication. We use short-lived certificates. And as we're going to go today, and we're going to go further into using HSMs in the data center or TPMs in your client for device trust. How Teleport works, this is just another extension of that previous diagram. As I mentioned, it's an identity native proxy in which everything can connect, all of your infrastructure connects to Teleport, and all of your engineers and machines can connect to Teleport. And within Teleport itself, we have a audit log and a RBAC engine. One thing that's also very popular with Teleport is our identity provider support. So instead of um, managing all of your users, you can use an external SAML or IDP, for example, GitHub in our community edition, or let's say Okta in our enterprise edition. And then you can use those external groups to define who can get access to which infrastructure. But when an engineer goes about their day, and I will show a demo, you log in, you can just use your standard tools. So you can use kubectl or TSH. Lastly, in this diagram, you see we have just-in-time access. I'm not going to touch on this too much, but this is sort of a great uh, feature that Teleport provides to allow um, 
you to implement the privilege of principle of least privilege. So only people with limited access, you can give people very limited access and they can request escalated privileges. So Teleport 12. Today, that was a little quick introduction into Teleport itself. Now I'm gonna dive into Teleport 12. So I'm gonna start with device trust. Um, we actually released this blog post um, just today. Hopefully someone can put this in the chat. And one thing that we've always been working at Teleport is sort of going beyond the perimeter security model. This, for people who aren't aware, would be historically companies used VPNs. And then, you know, about a decade or so ago, Google came out with their Beyond Core paper to say, and the ideas of the Beyond Core paper was you just can't trust the network. So you can't just use a VPN as a strong perimeter. And device trust is another security model that also improves um, the Beyond Core model by also only adopting certain devices can get access to your infrastructure. And I'd highly recommend reading this blog post. And I'm going to sort of go a little bit over what Teleport Device Trust is. So Teleport Device Trust is a new feature adding in Teleport 12. It allows you to only allow registered devices to access your infrastructure. And for example, in the case of the LastPass example, if that individual was using his home workstation to access company resources, this wouldn't be the case because Teleport Device Trust only allows company issued or enrolled devices to access your infrastructure. And it does this through using and saving the private key in the secure hardware store. And so if there's even any malware, you can't exfiltrate it. You can't get the session token. We currently have preview support for Mac OS. This is in preview. We have Windows support coming in Teleport 13. And another piece of early feedback that we've got is Jamf enrollment support. Jamf is a very common enterprise tool for Mac for enrolling um, your fleet quite easily into device trust. So I have a video here. Um, I'm not going to play the video, but you can view it on your own time. Um, but once you have added a device, there's a whole enrollment ceremony. Once you completed the enrollment ceremony, you get an asset tag and you know which device is accessing which infrastructure and you can enforce it. So I'm going to show a little demo um, here. Let me share my terminal. Let me make this a little bit bigger for everyone. So I'm going to show just one thing of Teleport itself. So I'm going to start off by logging into Teleport. You see I'm using this command line tool, uh, TSH, login proxy. <clears throat> In my other window, you can't see this, but it opened up a little browser window. I was already authenticated. And so now I've logged in as Ben Arendt, which is my GitHub username. I have access to these roles and these logins. I have access to Kubernetes. And for example, now um, if I take my Teleport server access, I can view all these machines. I can TSH and Ubuntu at Ansible. And like that, I've already got access to um, the host. And so this just makes the developer experience and workflow super smooth for accessing your infrastructure. And everything is also audited and collected as well. So for device trust, um, one of the important thing you need to do is for Mac, you need to make sure that we have this TSH touch ID diagnostics tool. This kind of lets you know whether um, it, your machine and also the binaries that you have support teleport device trust. And so this is a great way of debugging whether it has been added or not. If it, ha if it is turned on, um, you will see it under TSH status. I currently don't have the extension turned on since I just enrolled a new machine, but it will show up here that device trust is turned on. <clears throat> and um, that's like a little short overview of um, Teleport device trust. So let me stop sharing, come back to my presentation. Next up, I'm gonna be talking about Windows servers. 
So we added Windows Server support, I believe, in Teleport 8. When we launched this, we required all of these servers to be added to a Active Directory domain controller. <clears throat> Since then, we got feedback that we wanted people to add one-off hosts to, te to Teleport. And now we can add individual hosts which aren't connected to AD. And so this could be, you know, one workstation um, that's in a sort of factory somewhere, or this could be just like one isolated server on EC2, which you use for managing certain jobs. So for people who don't even have a full Active Directory domain controller, you can use Teleport Server Access. Some of the features which I'll go over, so we have clipboard support, cross OS folder sharing, session recording, and we've also made some improvements to session playback and performance improvements. Okay, so let me log into Teleport using the web UI. I have to change my window again. There's lots of changing. And so this is the proxy that most people are granted with. I have GitHub set up for SSO, but we also have options for passwordless as well. So I'm going to log in to Teleport. And you'll see here, this is the same inventory that you saw on the command line. I have all of my hosts here, my servers. I have some applications which I've added to Teleport. So for example, my Grafana, my Jenkins, my Metabase dashboard. I have one Kubernetes dashboard. I have a suite of databases, which I'll also dive into later in this webinar. And this is what we came for is our desktops. So here I have one desktop. I'm going to log in as administrator. It's going. Oh, hold on. I have to open in another tab. So you can see here I am now on a Windows server. So I can run, uh, for example, the calculator. I can just go about, you know, standard tasks such as uh, Windows Paint. And you can see it's, uh, we've definitely improved the performance. It's much more performant than the other versions of Teleport. I'm not going to save this. We have clipboard support. So if you wanted to get your server logs, let me just open actually Notepad. Uh, hello, world. Oh, have the ability to copy and paste. So no pads enabled. We also have options for directory sharing. I can show you how directory sharing works. So if I come to my downloads, let me find a folder here. So I've now shared a folder. Uh, unfortunately, you can't see this with our webinar platform, but in my PC here, you can see I now have cat photos on Teleport. This is the folder sharing that we support. And so you can see that the folder sharing up here is directory sharing is turned on. And so this makes it super easy to both copy logs and then also copy files from your Windows servers or export them. Um, you know, it's just a dog working on a computer, not the most important log. And so now I'm going to disconnect from this session and close this tab. Now I'm going to show you some of the auditing capabilities. And so one thing you'll see here, we have all this information for the audit log. So you can see we have clipboard data. We have directory sharing under our session recordings as well. We have a full recording of the session. Unfortunately, let me share the window. This can make my, uh, I think this should make this easier. I'm gonna play the session. You can see the session plays. And this is the session we just had. So we just increased and improved our playback. You can increase the speed. So you can see I went through Hello World. 
I got the dog and that's the end of my session. And so this is a very powerful feature to know like what happened during the session along with the audit events. Um, and so and a great addition to um, teleport server access. Just a note that the non-AD or passwordless login for local users is only a enterprise only feature for now. Um, hopefully we should extend this to our community edition, but we're starting with our enterprise. And so we're open to feedback and would love to hear what you say. So gonna look at the chat here, see if anyone has any questions. Okay. I have some questions here. Team Pure Remote doing remote. So for server support, um, for Linux, we don't currently have this on our roadmap. Um, but there is a ticket, as I'd recommend with Teleport, we're an open core company. Check out our ticket in uh, GitHub issues. And then which device trust also work for Teleport Cloud. Uh, from there, this device trust should work for Teleport Cloud. I think that they upgraded last week. So um, you should be good to go. Um, I think the documentation has been updated. Um, well, they're also, if you're working with someone on support, they're happy to help as well. And so we have another one um, around what's the release schedule for Teleport 13 for device enrollment, uh, but using Windows. This will be in, um, it's like a three month window, but. Often we'll do an early release and we love to get like feedback from users. So if you send me an email, Ben and Go Teleport, happy to um, get you connected with the team. We're sort of very open in the way in which we develop our features. All right, so I take a quick pause from questions and then kind of keep on rocking. Okay, so we've just gone through the Teleport demo. Oh, and then we have this video here. You can click this link or scan this QR code. This goes over how you set up um, the Windows Access Preview. One nice addition, we have this like EXE, which you just sort of install and it makes the setup very smooth and go ahead to our non-AD environment. Okay, next feature I'm gonna be talking about is our AWS as a GCP CLI support. For a while we've supported AWS CLI and AWS Management Console. This feature lets you basically provide access to your AWS resources. And so as you see in my applications, I have a dev role, dev account. I can share an AWS role to CloudWatch. This is a very limited view. And so this lets you provide a very fine grained role that people can assume to get access to AWS and only certain resources. And so this is a very useful um, addition. Once we added, this access to the web console, people will ask us to add support for the CLI. And so you can use this for AWS CLI. And in Teleport 12, we added Azure and GCP. And I'm gonna do a quick demo of um, GCP demo. So let me come back into my terminal. So I'm gonna do um, apps. LS, we have this Google Cloud. So I'm do TSH app login, Google Cloud. Your services account has been added. This is a service account which we've set up to assume. Then we have this new command, which is TSH G Cloud. And so I can list my instances. And I can list my instance. This is the Google Cloud telling me I have an M1 standard running. And you have access to the full suite of options you know, from G Cloud, depending upon which role you share. So this is a great tool for, let's say you just want to give people a very fine role for um, just the instances or maybe just big query. Everything also goes through Teleport. And we have a full um, audit log as well. And so if I come back into management here, you see in my audit log, I have a new data chunk that a GCP session was started on which cloud. 
and and which user assume this role. And so greatly reducing how you have to sort of share and have that one centralized place for Teleport to give access to your um, GCP roles. Okay, chugging along. Um, next edition, we have Teleport database access. I did a count yesterday. I think we're around like 32 supported databases. We have a full list in our guides here, database access guides. We added four new ones in Teleport 12, AWS DynamoDB, Redshift, and Azure SQL Server and Flexible Server. We have all the guides here. There's multiple ways in which people deploy Teleport. I personally like a sidecar model in which I run the Teleport database service alongside the database. This is very common, especially if I have uh, Postgres or MySQL in a private subnet and I need to get access to it. It's a pretty common problem with a database service and going through Teleport. It means you never have to open up any like firewalls to all of your employees. Um, so it makes that whitelisting and firewall problem much easier. And then everything sort of goes through Teleport. So let's do a demo again. OK, so back into my terminal. OK, so this is a similar pattern. So I do DBLS. Yeah, I have all of my databases here. Just a note, for you might see these labels. Labels is a great primitive that you use for RBAC. For example, you might add certain people only have access to the staging environment or the production environment. These can also be dynamic. They can update based upon certain maintenance windows. Um, see my server tags. You can pull in, we can pull in like AWS tags as well automatically. And so for people who are, you know, maybe just starting out with Teleport, I'd highly recommend checking out our RBAC system and our labeling system in combination. So let's get back to our database. So let's log in to DynamoDB. So you see your connection information for database DynamoDB has been saved. You can start a local proxy for my user. So I'm starting a TSH proxy DB. I'm doing tunnel. I have my role. And then this is the name of my database. DynamoDB. And then so you can say you can also specify port flag, use this command line, which you can use for both the database GUI or CLI client. And so what's kind of interesting here is you see that this is a endpoint pointing to localhost. So I actually need to open up a new tab here. Oh, this one's much way smaller. And then DB. You'll see that this says, oh, it needs a requirement. So let's just describe uh, endpoints. And then here we have, so this is describing the endpoint that we have and the cache period. And so this has access to all of the options that you would have. The range of flags. I don't know what the rest of the commands. I think I need to describe what I wanted to do, but um, that kind of gives you an overview of the connection. Another important thing you see here, we have the database certificate. This certificate is valid for nine hours. This is also configurable. And this is sort of also a strong fundamental of Teleport that every certificate and access that you get issued is valid for um, the period of time that you define. And so for my role, I have nine hours, which is a great working day. And this also solves the problem of, let's say, someone's computer was stolen. If they got access to that machine, they would have to revalidate and get access to the infrastructure to get the new certificate. And so these short-lived credentials and certificates are very helpful. And we also add this extension to machine ID, which is another feature. OK, so let's come back to my slides. OK, um, let me see. I have some questions in the chat. Okay, I think I'll probably answer questions at the end. I'm going to just keep on trucking. Um, another edition, Teleport 12, we've made some great additions to our Kubernetes access platform. 
we've updated and refactored our helm charts which is also split out how we deal with the auth and proxy i'd highly recommend checking that out if you have previously upgraded um there's documentation one thing i'm going to focus on which is a new addition in teleport 12 is per pod back this is super exciting and this makes dealing with sort of RBAC much easier than linking to teleport roles. And then also we have a lot of performance improvements. So for people who are new to teleport, this is what a role looks like. One addition in teleport 12 is this addition of a Kubernetes resource. In this example, we're saying this, we only allow pod access to production with a web app with this regex and anyone any pod in the development namespace. Um, previously, you'd have to create groups or Kubernetes users. This means that you can provide very fine-grained access to your resources without having to worry about internal mapping in um, Kubernetes itself. So let's show a little quick um, Kubernetes demo. All right, back in my terminal. And so it's the same um, same flow. <clears throat> uh, you know, you can list, and then you do cube login. And so I can do cube co version. And then and exec into a pod I have here. Okay. So now I'm in my Kubernetes cluster, but I'm also exec into a pod. And so you can see my developer experience is super smooth. I'm just using uh, basically kubectl to go about my tasks. And one benefit for people who have rolled out Teleport into their organization is is that all of this information is also captured in the Teleport audit log. Um, you can see I started a um, Kubernetes request. I sort of list the version. I did a get. I also started a session. And then, then along with sort of session recordings for servers, we also have session recordings for kubectl execs as well. OK, so um, there is the example of the session playing. And let me come back to our demo. So I'm going to just quick launch a quick poll here. Um, so for all of these things that I've demoed, is there any features that you plan to um, using next? I think the poll might be in the second tab beyond the chat. Okay, I'll give it a couple of minutes. OK, so it looks like we have a lot of device trust, which is great. Some purple drawback, some widows, and some Azure. So kind of a good blend um, across the board of uh, features. And so next steps we have, for people who are new, we have a 14-day trial. You can just go go teleport.com, sign up. You can also download and get started with our community edition, um, go docs getting started. And then also we have our GitHub community and our Slack, um, which is also, we're an open core company. You can create issues and um, we're happy to help you out. So now I know we have lots of questions. If you could ask them in the Q and A, um, I know we have a, still a good bit of time um, that I can help answer. So Eric, our back, he planned to add role inheritance and overriding. For this question, for 
our back i would recommend checking out our documentation um it does get kind of complicated and because uh, like creating an rbac engine to provide the right amount of access can be complicated that you need to test it we actually have a project called predicate um which is available on our github and this is a way of sort of testing how rbac rules work that might help answer your question around inheritance overriding generally we wouldn't want to we generally take the advantage of we tend to take the view of deny access more than allow it from a security perspective so in that case we wouldn't allow overriding and so it's also a balance about how to get your r back in the right way uh, but was happy to help um we have one around um cloud access service broker um I'm actually not super familiar with CASBs, um, and this is probably something that I'd have to get back to you on. Um, I'm happy to follow up. Let's see, what else do we have? Timeline for Linux devices. If this is a specific question, I don't know if this is Linux devices. Oh, this is Linux device for device trust. I believe this is also on our roadmap, but one thing that makes it a little difficult with Linux is the the way in which it works for Windows is that we use um, TPMs, which are trusted platform modules. I think support for different Linux distros, the way in which they sort of securely boot and use TPMs can differ. And so I think if you have a specific Linux distro in mind, um, that'll be something that we could kind of like investigate and look into. Okay, so I think that's a lot of the questions. Um, any other ones in the Q&A, please add them in. Um, OK, anything else? Let me see. Yeah, the presentation will be shared. Um, we have the docs, too. OK, um, it looks like we're at the end here. Okay, TPM should be usable with RHEL or Ubuntu, I guess. Yeah, so I think probably Red Hat, Linux, or Ubuntu. Um, I mean, we'd love to work with, you know, Ubuntu, probably Ubuntu Pro probably likely has something if you have a large fleet. Um, what we often see is, is a mixture of mainly macOS or Windows teams um, really uh, nailing down access. Have you tried Windows Managed AD over GCP? and try to connect Windows AD access desktop. Yes, that should work. Managed AD is kind of finicky. I've only tried it with AWS. Um, probably best thing is create a, um, a message in our Slack. We'll try and get into it. We have found that sometimes you need to add the root authority or change some permissions in Active Directory and not all managed AD because it's managed, they don't let you change them. And so we can kind of look into that, but sometimes they won't let you do that. Okay, I think that's likely the end. So I would like to um, thank everyone for joining. Thanks, Kat. She's added our community Slack in the top. Um, it's great to have so many Teleport community and enterprise users today. Um, thanks for joining. And um, hopefully I'll see you in three more months for the next version of Teleport. But there'll be many more features released in the interim. I recommend following our YouTube channel, also joining our Slack, and also subscribing to our newsletter. So thanks for joining. <laughs>